Amen, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you are our redemption, that you are life, that you are love, and that you've come, Lord, that you have drawn so near, Lord. You're a God who speaks, who leads, directs, great God. And we thank you. You've already been moving in our midst tonight, Lord. And now as we come to open your word together, we just want to open our hearts to you, Lord. I pray you bless every person here tonight, Lord. No accident that we're here. You knew, Lord. You knew this moment would be, great God. And you long to meet with us as your people. And so just bless Billy as he comes to share your word, I pray. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. We are really blessed to have Pastor Billy Williams coming to share the message with us tonight. This is the first time he's preached on this stage. It's a lot bigger than the other one. Can you give Billy a big welcome as he comes to share the word with us tonight? Oh, rookie error. Sorry about that. I sincerely underestimated how far back I was. I'm sorry about that. And I over, overestimated my fitness too. I'm sorry. Just pray for me. Must be a healing service coming up soon, surely. Whew. Um, it's, um, it's great to be here sharing. This is my first time in the big auditorium sharing uh, for a night service. And um, if you're new here, um, you're, you're in a series at the moment, actually. And so I've, I've, I've stumbled upon you guys in a series. And um, the series is basically uh, titled By My Spirit. And uh, I want to talk about pathway tonight. And um, the truth, I want to be honest right up front, is there is both a mystery and a reality to the Spirit. Now, in the New Testament, the, the, the New Testament of the Bible and the Old Testament are actually written in two different languages. And there's a very fascinating phenomenon that occurs actually in both languages. Though, though they're different languages, something incredible happens in, in both. And that is in particular with this word spirit. And in both the languages, the word spirit actually means uh, breath, and it also means wind. So, so in both the New Testament and the Old Testament, when you read about the Spirit, that, that is a word that can cover the breath and also the breeze. And, and I just find that so informative tonight, as you consider what it means to buy my Spirit, that that means there is an incredible mystery if you know anything about breath, if you know anything about wind, there's a mystery to that. And of course, there's a reality. And so I want you to hold those two things together tonight and realize them and, and understand that. Come from that perspective tonight. And, and, and in line with that, I want to just be totally honest with you that, that I, because it's mystery, I know the reality, I believe the reality of the Spirit of God, but the mystery, I, I, I cannot explain to you tonight some things. I want you to hold that tension. I'm holding it up here. I, I, I can't technically describe how this works because part of it is an incredible mystery. And, and one of the first places I want to go for that is a, a very particular scripture. And, and I know it can be dangerous to just pick some certain scriptures, but this one just hit me. I, I wanted to show this to you right from the onset to talk about this pathway and, and so the first one I want to show you is from Acts. And it was actually a written a letter to, to people. And, and just one line, a powerful line in this letter, uh, you'll see it up here. It says, it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. Now, that might just sound like a simple line that someone's just written in a letter, but this group of people are making a very powerful point. They're saying it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And sometimes I don't know your experience, I don't know your understanding of the Spirit of God, but for some people you might be thinking that what happens is you've got your own spirit, you walk along, you accept Jesus and all of a sudden the Spirit of God takes over everything. You no longer are in control, you know, like you might be a robot or, you know, and, and, and there's no, nothing of you left in that. And that's dangerous, and I think this helps us because what you read here is this end. There was this sense that they were listening carefully for the Spirit of God in whatever way they were doing that. And to describe that, they said it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. And, and that's almost like a partnership. This walking together 
with the Spirit, this pathway that is more partnership than it is about this overtaking of you and this sensitivity to, to partner with the Spirit of God. I think it's very powerful. I hope that's helping you as, you as we look at this thing called by my spirit. Think about that, what that means for us, to partner with the Spirit of God in our lives, a relationship with the living God through his Spirit. And the second place that I wanted to look at was, in fact, Jesus himself. And so I find this extremely informative. And again, just, just, a, just a verse that can be so helpful to us. And so this is Jesus himself, and this particular um, uh, incident is quite early in his ministry. And this is what it says, and this is um, from Mark, and you'll read it in different ver- in, uh, the Gospels. But this one from Mark, if you have a look, it's from Mark chapter 1. It's talking about what the Spirit does with Jesus. So listen about this. At once the Spirit sent him, sent Jesus, out into the wilderness. Now, this is pretty fascinating. This is, this is incredible. If you can hold this tonight, this may just change the game for your journey in this. For some of you tonight, I honestly believe this could be just what you need to hear tonight. Because sometimes, if we're not careful, again, one of the perceptions we might have about this thing called faith, about walking with God, is that once we give our life to Jesus, well, it's onward and upward. Everything's fine. There'll be no bumps in the ground. We'll be hovering above all the trouble be looking down, saying, oh, I used to be there, I used to be there. And there are some ma- amazing moments like that. But I want you to carefully consider what's being said here for Jesus himself. This is the Son of God. And when it says the Spirit, I understand that to mean the Spirit of God. So what does the Spirit of God do to the Son of God? And we read it here, it says, sent him. And uh, in the original language, it's actually much more forceful. It's got this fairly dramatic action to it. Um, Some versions will say, cast him, thrust him. And so what this is saying is the Spirit of God thrusts the Son of God out into the wilderness. Now, I don't know your perception of the wilderness I don't know if you've ever been to a place that's wilderness, bush or desert. But if we're not careful, we're tempted to think that those are places that God banishes people. That's the place of punishment, isn't it? If you end up in the wilderness, doesn't that mean that you've done the wrong thing? And yet in this passage, we read at this point in Jesus' life, that the author and perfecter of our faith is compelled by the very Spirit of God to go into the wilderness. So if this is the Spirit of God, God is love. So what I can read, and I hope this works, is that the Spirit of love sent the Son of God into the wilderness. Just think about that for a moment. That that part of Jesus' spiritual journey was the physical location of going to this place of wilderness, this place where no one was, this place where he was out from his family, out from what he knew, and out into this place that for many people represents difficulty and chaos, questions, mystery. And Jesus goes there. Now, a lot of you here know that I have an Aboriginal heritage, and so for me, I love the wilderness, to be honest with you. I love the bush. I love, I love to go out in the desert, it's a, and it's an amazing place. In fact, I've, I've just literally on Wednesday night came back from nine days of being of a, on a trip. So I willingly went. I wanted to go out. I flew into Melbourne with a friend, and we jumped in and, and drove across northwestern Victoria, down into Adelaide in South Australia. And we came up through Port Augusta, and we ended up at the most remote spot that we got to. And I think I've got a photo of it, actually. And I want to show you this photo. And we, were, uh, we weren't quite at the Udnadatta track. So we're just not quite at the Udnadatta track, and it's quite a reasonably remote area. In fact, remote enough that no cars came past. No cars were there. 
And so we're out in the middle of this desert. And as you can see, I mean, um, and, and sometimes we think the desert's got nothing, but uh, you spend a bit of time there and you do start to pick up on things. And so out in this desert country, um, this is something that I've, I have done for a number of years is I've put my hand up because I know that a very important part of my journey is to revisit these desert places, to go out. And, it, and it's fascinating as, as things start to strip away, as you start to get away from what you know, the rhythms of your, your life as you understand it. It just that tends to create an incredible space. And of course, I see the creator out there we, we had some amazing sunsets and sunrises and the landscape. It must have been formed by the Creator. But it's also a very deep space, a journey in the spiritual life. And this is what leads me to share with you a very powerful song that was written in the Psalms. Because I want to speak directly to this thing, this pathway that appears to be part of the spiritual journey. And many of us want to run away from it, and many of us might want to ignore it or, or think that we're beyond it. But I, I want you to hesitate and, and hold this tonight because this is a song that's in the Bible from the Psalms. It's from Psalm 42. And so let's just have a look at the first few verses of Psalm 42. It would have been sung for people on a pilgrimage, people on the journey. And this is what it says. As the deer pants for streams of water... So my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? My tears have been my food day and night, while people say to me all day, all day long, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul how I used to go to the house of God under the protection of the Mighty One with shouts of joy and praise among the festive throng. This song is such an honest song. I'm so thankful for this song in the Psalms. The, the writer of this psalm, the, the lyricist, has written with true authenticity about the journey at this particular point in their life. And it would have been sung by people who were recognising that in their own lives. And it would have been sung to fellow pilgrims who also may have been in those places and spaces of the wilderness. Listen to what it says. The, the, the the soul is panting for God. It's thirsty. One thing I knew in our desert trip that we had to take was water. And here we read that the, the psalmist is writing and saying, that's how I feel in this wilderness place. I thirst for God. I need God. The cry of the heart, when can I go and meet with God? Where is God in the wilderness? And to make matters even worse, the tears are the food day and night. This is someone who is really in a difficult place. And to make matters worse, everybody around knows. And it would be like a stab to the heart where is your God? We see your circumstances, so where is your God? And then to really set the scene, the lyricist says, I, rem I think about what it used to be like. I remember, I used to be in amongst the worshippers. I used to be in amongst everyone as we sang and cheered and everything seemed like it was going great. And that really hurts because I remember I used to be there, but I'm not right now. Such honest lyrics. And as it continues on, listen to the rest of the verses. In verse 5 it goes, On further to, to continue to sing this song. 
And so as the deer pants for water, as I remember what it used to be like, as everyone's in my ear and telling me it's no good, you start to hear the inner dialogue. What a lyricist, what authenticity. What's going on in, in, in the author's mind? You hear it. My soul is downcast within me. I will remember you from the land of Jordan, the heights of Hermon, from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep in the roar of your waterfalls. All your waves and breakers have swept over me. By day the Lord directs his love. At night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. There is such a reality and an, an integrity in these lyrics that I've just appreciated over my own life. That self-talk, you can almost hear it there, my soul, why are, why are you downcast? What's going on? Shouldn't I, be, shouldn't I be different? Shouldn't things be great? I, I've got, I'm looking for you. Where are you? I, why is my soul in this place? And then there's almost a hint. We start to see a little breaking through where the, the author of this song says, wherever I'm going to be, I need to keep looking. I need to keep trusting. And then this powerful, this is in fact the line that drew me so powerfully when I prepared for tonight it says that deep calls out to deep it can be on the surface that you look around and you you can make all your judgments everybody around you can make judgments about the surface but this spiritual journey requires a deep that calls out to deep might be just a twinkle, might be just a, a, a sense it might be just a, a small breaking through even in the midst of your wilderness but each and every one of us, wherever you are tonight, that's what we need, is a deep that calls out to deep. Later on in the New Testament, Paul is going to say that it's only the spirit of a person that knows a person. And then he's going to say, that means it's only the spirit of God that knows God. And so the spirit of God and our spirits, we need to walk together. We need to partner in this thing called life. Here the psalmist says, deep calls out to deep. Paul says, spirit calls out to spirit. One of the fellows that travelled on the desert trip with us was a Baptist pastor, a young man from Adelaide, and um, he took a photo of me out in, the, in, in one of the spots. And it's this beautiful sunrise... Uh, you see, I'm rugged up. It was so cold. I was about one overnight. I had a beanie. I had about four jumpers. Oh, my goodness, it was cold. And sometimes I'm thinking, what, what am I doing out here? Why, why did I come on this trip again? But I want to tell you why. I have... I think over the years been pretty honest with you as I've preached about my wilderness times. I don't need to rehash them tonight. If you're new tonight, I just want you to know that I know what the wilderness feels like. I know what it's like to go to desert places in my life of faith. And it's caused me to ask exactly the same questions, to, to literally cry out exactly the same things that the psalmist cried out. Wondering where God was and why my soul was so downcast. I know what the desert feels like, I really do. And I've felt it on multiple occasions. And sometimes I feel like it's a deeper and deeper desert each time. I go to the desert because I need to continue to remind myself that God is with me in those places. Sometimes God has taken me, thrust me into those places. I know it's not always true, but I do believe that just as Jesus was thrust into the wilderness, that's what God has done to me on several occasions. And I go back out 
And I can guarantee you that morning I was running through those wilderness experiences. I was physically in the desert, but I was, t- I was considering my emotional deserts. I was thinking about my spiritual wilderness and being reminded that God promised that he was with me in those times. And you don't have to go out to the physical desert. But I'm pretty certain that there's people here tonight, you know what the desert does feel like emotionally and spiritually. And I know you meant to wait till the end of the sermon. That's when you do a response. But I'm just going to change it up a little bit tonight. I'm going to be bold enough and I hope you're courageous enough. It's a big call. But if in your journey of faith, you are someone who has known what the desert feels like, you know that cry from your soul, wondering where God was. If you've ever felt like that on your journey, can I just ask you to stand right now? Would you be courageous enough to do that? I appreciate that. Just remain standing. If I can just press the the friendship a little bit. If that wilderness has been part of your 2019, would you stay standing? So be seated. But if you, this year has been a wilderness year for you. I appreciate that. If I really press the friendship tonight and you're courageous enough, I'm bold enough to ask, if you are in that wilderness right now, would you remain standing? If tonight you know that wilderness experience. Please be seated. If we're not careful in our spiritual journey, even as a community tonight, I want to speak to you. If you're not in that place, then this is a sacred moment for you as a community. Because what can often happen is if we're not careful, what we can do is, is make the wilderness really bad for people. We can step up to them and give them all of our little rundown sheets, what we think they're not doing right, probably what they've done wrong. That we, or we might even just give a little throwaway line. Oh, God's with you in it. And, that, and, and, and look, it seems beautiful, but I want you to be much more sensitive. You know what it feels like. If you know what that time feels like, it's a time to just walk alongside a brother or a sister. out of a deep compassion. That word compassion means to carry one another's wounds. And isn't that what Jesus did for us? He carried our wounds. From my own cultural experience, I have this Aboriginal heritage and one of the most misunderstood things in our culture is this concept, you may have heard it called walkabout and for a lot of people it's the most misunderstood thing, it's become a stereotype and what people think walkabout means is, oh that's someone with no care, they just walk off. That is so far from the truth. What walkabout was, was an intentional part of your learning journey. It was an act of incredible love and you had to be careful. You couldn't be careless, you had to be careful. And so what elders would do is send young people away, away from what they knew, away from their comfort, their family, the things that they were hanging on to. And it was this opportunity to go somewhere else and to trust. As an act of faith, believe that as long as you were respectful, as long as you gave respect to the creator and community and country, you'd be looked after. No matter how it looked, you would always be looked after. It was an act of faith. It wasn't being careless, it was being careful. And in fact, a better name for it might be not learning journey, but an unlearning journey. And so often that is what God is leading us into. 
The Spirit of God himself leads us, compels us sometimes to leave the safety, to leave what we know and hang on to and wants us to trust more and more. And sometimes, sometimes that place is the wilderness. And one of the things I've learned, I can't explain this mystery, I'm sorry. I don't exactly know how the Spirit of God and our spirit, how that all works, but I've experienced it. I believe it. And this pathway, what it needs is a certain posture. That's the essence of what I want to share with you tonight. Are you willing to keep walking, trusting that God is with you in it? Despite how it looks, are you willing to walk and Cry out to God in the midst of it, believing that he is there, that he loves you, that he will whisper into your hearts and souls that he will show himself to be the faithful God that he is. We make the path by walking. How do we, how do we partner with the Holy Spirit? We make the path by walking. So often in the New Testament that phrase is used, walk with the Spirit. And I'm so captivated that, by that that I learnt in my own language how to, how to name that, how to say that in, in the Gumaroi language. We make the path by walking. We say, Warawingini, give me a bildana, yana wandai. Warawingini, give me a bildana, yana wandai. We make the path by walking. And so my deepest deepest prayer as a fellow pilgrim who has walked in the wilderness especially you who are right there now my brothers and sisters we just want to encourage you to warrowing in just to continue to walk and trust our God who is gracious and loving and merciful he is with you Let's pray. Eternal God, you who always have been and always will be, You who know, you who created each and every one of us. You who created all the landscapes that we can see and be in, the spaces and the places, the mountaintops and the valleys, the oceans and the rivers, yes, and the deserts. Creator God, I just pray to you tonight. I, I pray you'll help us in our posture. For those who are in the desert, maybe some that have just come out of it, maybe some that are in it tonight or will be in it tomorrow. And I just have a sense, Lord, that you, you, you're speaking and, and you're saying that the learning is the yearning. The learning is the yearning. Jesus, you said that we could be filled with living water. You said that, that if anyone thirsts, come. And so tonight, in this community, for individuals, but this community, I just pray you'll find in us a people that yearn for you. Father, I pray that we will so yearn in our souls that you will pour out your spirit that you will breathe life in the midst of difficult times in the, the, the midst of chaos uncertainty fear, failure, 
Lord, come. By your Spirit, come. We're going to respond in worship in just a moment. I was reminded of Jesus' words as Billy was speaking. In John chapter 7, Jesus, who was familiar with the wilderness, and he said this, it was on the last and the greatest day of the Feast of Tabernacles, in fact, where Jesus stood up as a great crowd gathered. And it says that he stood up in a loud voice, he spoke these words. He said, let anyone who is thirsty... Come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as Scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. And by this it says he meant the Spirit. Tonight, if you're in that desert place, this is the invitation to you. Jesus says, come, come if you're thirsty, come drink that rivers of living water that you might encounter afresh tonight the spirit of god his blessing over your life his love afresh made known to you his power his comfort his love that is his heart for you that's jesus invitation to you tonight and so why don't we stand together as we sing our final song let's stand together now and if you'd like just to be prayed for tonight just come down the front we'd love just to pray for you to stand with you you're not meant to do the journey alone we're meant to stand with one another pray for one another we'd love just to pray for you just ask the spirit of god to bless you come this invitation that you might know rivers of living water flowing from deep within through jesus by his holy spirit tonight let's worship him we want to pray very specifically at the end of our service tonight for our teams that are getting ready to minister for Mega Buzz. We're going to have 500 primary school age kids here on the property. We've got a team of 180 volunteers that are going to head out. And not only that, Team Street starts next Sunday. Pastor Andrew and Natalie, 700 people are going to be out there at the UQ Gatton campus. Amazing ministry as well. And we want to pray for them. So I'm going to ask you, if you're volunteering in Mega Buzz or Teen Street, we want you to come and gather right down the front here. Come right down the front now. We want to pray for you. We want to ask God to anoint you by His Holy Spirit. We've been hearing about that again tonight. And then we're going to sing a final song, Good Grace. We're going to sing Good Grace as we leave tonight. But come right down the front here, huddle up close if you're part of these teams. And if um, Pastor Andrew's around somewhere, I'd love just to get you guys up on the stage. Tyrone or Emily or Isaiah are here tonight too as key leaders. We'd just love to get you up on the stage. But huddle in close, huddle in close down the front here. Come right down. There's heaps of space down the front here in the new auditorium, which is great. We are so blessed by all the volunteers, all the people who are involved in this. Um, keep coming forward, keep coming forward. And now what I'd love is for some others to come and gather around them and lay hands on them. So come, some others just want to come forward just to lay hands on them. Um, whoever you are, just come on down. If you've got a heart just to pray and to ask God to bless these ones tonight, we want to just lift them up in a special way, ask God to pour out His Spirit upon them and anoint them. That's great. Some others to come and surround them as we pray for them. It's an incredible opportunity we have to share the good news of the hope of Jesus with a generation to come, these primary school ages, teenagers as well, and the crew up the front here as well. Why don't we join our hearts together as we pray right now? Let's do that. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. What an incredible blessing we have this very week and the week after, Lord, to lift your name high, Lord. And we are praying, Lord, right now with faith, Lord, that you're going to move powerfully this week ahead, Lord, through mega buzz. These young ones are going to come, Lord, from all sorts of circumstances and backgrounds, but you love them, great God. You've got a plan and a purpose for them. And we are praying that so many, Lord, will encounter your love and your grace, what it means to have a personal relationship with you. We thank you that children are such an important part of your kingdom, great God, that you invited them to come to you, great God. And so we're praying right now for your anointing upon this team, Lord. May they know the empowering of your spirit, great God. May they know an, an energy and a joy and a strength that would just well up from within them, Lord. We pray that they'd shine so brightly, the light of your love, Lord, that you have revealed to them 
to these kids, to their parents as well, Lord. We pray that as well for Teen Street, Lord. These hundreds of teenagers are going to be there. Bless them, Lord. Move deeply in their hearts, Lord. Take them deeper than ever before with you, we pray, great God. And we pray as well, Lord, for those who are going to come who don't know you onto that camp, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to them, Lord. We pray for these leaders tonight, Lord. We pray for Ty. We pray your blessing for Emily, for Isaiah. We pray for Pastor Trish right now, Lord. We join our hearts, Lord. We've been praying at all of our services for your healing touch over her life, great God. That you'll release this call from her, great God. You restore her voice, Lord. Health to her body, we ask for Tuesday, Lord, that she'll be able to come and to lead, Lord. We thank you for her. Thanks for her heart. Thanks for her gifts and abilities, Lord. We commit her to you. For Pastor Andrew as well, Lord. Anoint him and Natalie and the whole Teen Street team, Lord. Bless them, we pray. Oh, Lord, we're asking that it be one of the most powerful Teen Streets ever, Lord. We really do pray that, great God. So many stories of you at work, answering prayers, moving in miraculous, supernatural ways, we pray. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to be part of your kingdom plans and purposes. And so now we sing, Lord. We worship you. We lift our voices in praise to you right now. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay down the front. We're going to do one last worship song. Good grace. Sing of Jesus, our redemption. This is to warm you up for the week. Get you pumped up. Here we go. We're going to worship together as we sing this final song. Let's put our hands together as we worship and thank our Saviour, our King tonight. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are praying this very week, Lord. You, Lord, you who are our redemption, by no other name, are we safe except by your name alone, Lord? We want to lift your name high, great God. This very week, Lord, we are praying with faith, Lord. And so we're expecting for the things you're going to do. Bless each one, I pray. I pray that right across this whole service, every person, Lord, just you bless them in this week ahead, great God. We thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you for who you are. We praise you and we worship you in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. We are doing our mega buzz setup as well after service. Feel free to mingle for a bit and say hi. Don't go anywhere. Hang around and we're going to start setting up as well. God bless you. Thanks so much for sharing together. Can we put our hands together and encourage our mega buzz and our, our Teen Street teams as well? It'd be fantastic. God bless you. Thanks so much.